got Barkley here and I've been grooming him since 2008 and it's 2018. Matter of fact, it's like September 2018. So, I mean, we're going on a little while here. We've got the dog upstand under here. It's barely touching, but uh, just for assistance during the grooming. First thing I did was a 10 blade in the sanitary area. So as soon as I came in here, I actually lifted the tail and did a shave. Now, can you see towards the right, right here? That's really hard to see. It's gonna be down, bottom right, how, how swollen this area looks. Right in here. So I can feel it's actually really a, a ball in there. And I've been grooming him this long and I've never had anal gland issues. But, as you can see, look how swollen it is. Okay, so I'm actually going to do an uh, anal gland expression. It's going to be real hard to capture this on video with only one person here, but let's see if I can get this propped up here. I'm going to muzzle him because this is not pleasant and I've never had to do them on him before. Okay, then I'm going to use gloves. I've got my gloves kept in a nice container. If you need a container, let me know. I'm trying to keep you guys here. Okay. I put the glove on. Get my lubricant ready. I'm gonna get a napkin ready as well. Paper towel. Do not do this without proper veterinarian training. I've, I have had training. I'm gonna use quite a bit of lube to make sure that it's not as bad as it can be. Okay, here we go. Put that lube on there. We're going in on this side first. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm so sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry. Okay, one more. Extremely painful. Extremely full. I'm take the muzzle off. Okay, okay, buddy. Woo, it's smelly. Let me get a grip here. Look how much anal glands I got out. This, this wiry stuff looking here. Woo, it's smelly. This stuff on the right was the left anal glands, the stuff over here was the other anal glands. Extremely smelly, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Wash my hands after that one because it was just really smelly and I wanted to be able to, you know, get, rinse his butt and get him in the tub for a minute and then I'll get my hands clean before I explain to you guys what that was all about. Woo, those were really full and really smelly. <laughs> so, Couple things, I've got Barkley in the tub here. We're about to bathe him, but I wanted to just capture everything on my mind. I know I've done anal gland videos with you guys before. Go back and look at my channel. Go to youtube.com slash myfavoritegroomer. Go to my favorite groomer channel. Click on my channel, right? And then search anal glands in my search engine. And you'll see all the anal gland videos pop up and this one will now be one of them. Now it's key to remember is that if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with the anal glands. If you've had training like myself at a veterinarian clinic, then by all means, good for you. Most of the time, groomers don't know how to do internal anal glands, and unless you know and have been trained, you shouldn't do them. I do not recommend anybody doing external anal glands. You can apply pressure from the external area. In my opinion, you are not gonna get all that out. You are gonna get some squishy stuff out. But if you don't get behind that full sack, and there's two sacks, if you don't get behind each sack, you will leave a lot in there or actually abrupt the anal gland and push it backwards because it's like a balloon. You're gonna push, 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 push it in the wrong direction just by applying pressure the wrong way and you're gonna cause a problem. So leave the anal glands alone unless you've been trained by a veterinarian or you know what you're doing and you went to school, you know, that kind of thing. Do not mess with the anal glands. If you're a pet owner, Believe you me, you have no idea who's bathing your dog. You may not know who's bathing your dog and doing anal glands every time your dog goes into a facility. So ask some questions. 
and be sure to, to say, look, I want to talk to the bather bathing my dog. I want to talk to everybody. I want everyone to know, leave my dog's anal glands alone. Can they blow up? Yes. Does every dog's anal glands need to be done? No. So go figure. You're going to have to hit or miss the situation. In his case, I've been grooming him since 2008. That's 10 years. He never needed an anal gland. The key is, is having the same groomer if you can. It's really hard. It's a fast paced industry and fast rotation. But if you have the same groomer, they're paying attention to these things that are really important. And because I've been grooming him all these years, not only do the parents trust me, but I know when something is different and I know how to make the call. So if I didn't know how to do anal glands today, I would let the parent know, hey, anal glands looked really different today. I recommend seeing a veterinarian right away. Once the anal glands blow up, like of that balloon I'm telling you about, when they get as full as that balloon can get and pop, then they'll be bloody and hanging out of the bobby a little, a little bit or just really swollen looking back there. They won't look very pretty and you'll be going to the vet no matter what anyway. At that point, you, you might start right at the minimum $150 or so, depending on your veterinarian, to take care of that issue. And the anal gland area is the hardest part, one of the hardest places that's gonna heal because if you can imagine, your pet's gonna be using the restroom every day. So it's an area that can have contamination, bacteria, you know, feces, bacteria, mixing with blood, mixing with repair. So this is a very big deal. Uh, I hope this video teaches you a little bit about what anal glands look like and not to do them externally, to have someone that's professional do them internally. Thanks for watching DD Core with My Favorite Groomer on YouTube. Check out our store at myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop. Hover over shop and look at all the categories we have. Be sure to pick up the Ash Gray My Favorite Groomer t-shirt, which is on sale right now to support us. And if you need anything, please contact me through my website in the About Me section or About Us and just contact. Send me an email. Now that we've expressed the anal glands, it's much different in there. Nice and soft, there's no balls or fluid. It's nice and soft in there, and there's no swollenness. It's, it's kind of puffy because I mean, I did an anal gland, right? But yeah, see how it's much different here. It's nice and soft, there's no roundness to it. Big difference. All right, so real quick, re crap, re crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so real quick recap on Barkley. After we got done with Barkley's groom yesterday, I had a long discussion with mom about why he may or may not have had to have the anal glands done now that he's older. One could be genetics, two could just be age, and three could be just something in the food that was changed. So I had a Dotson that I was grooming for many years. It wasn't until she was 13 that she had uh, anal gland issues come up. Pet parent called me about midnight. I picked up the phone. They told me what was happening. She was trying to poop, but I could actually hear her. They were in the yard. She was screaming. The dog was screaming. Couldn't poop. I said, you've got to go into the emergency room. So they did. It was anal glands. They were so full she couldn't poop. So at that point, every two months, we were doing anal gland expression on that dog. It just was what it was. Uh, they ended up moving out of state, so I didn't groom that her until she passed away. But Anal glands were then going to have to be done regularly. On Barkley, it may be the same thing. It may be age. But mom did mention recently they went out of town and the pet stayed with a friend or, or pet sitter. And she knew that the pet sitter was giving them some kind of rawhide or milk bone or something. So there was introduction to something else in his diet that he's not used to. That his system is not used to. So could this be the reason? Absolutely. So I told her, I'm not going to know, and you're not going to know, unless we ride it out a little bit and see. In the next 30 days, pay attention to that area. I showed her what to look for. The before and after pictures and this video are going to be her tools to use to compare what it looked like full and what it looked like not full. Because the anal glands are internally, internal of the dog's body. So it's not like you can lift the tail and go, oh yeah, they're full. You can't do that. If someone other than Barkley came in and they were a new client and I didn't groom them for eight years, and they said, can you check my dog's anal glands? My answer is no, We're, we can't check them. I can do them and then we'll know how full they are or we can just not do them at all. It's your call. You can't just check them, okay? It's just impossible to just check some anal glands because when you get in there, you're like, oh my goodness, or you get in there and you're like, ah, oh, nothing's in there. 
So different case by case scenarios can exist out there. With Barkley, for the next 30 days, we're gonna watch that area. Pet parent is gonna watch that area. I told her also, don't expect his anal glands to be on point with grooming times. Keep an eye, he might get full anal glands because of his system now, not because of those milk bones or rawhide. He might just get full anal glands now regularly and you'll have to go in every two months to a veterinarian to have them done. Or me, call me and, and come in for, for that only. But don't expect it to be like perfectly coinciding with the grooming times. So she knows what to watch for and I've briefed her. So anything that was introduced to the body, food, treats, anything new can do that to your dog. So food, the next thing is just age, things you can't change with the body getting older, and two gen or three genetics. So th a few things that I believe causes the anal glands to be that full. Do all dogs need them done? No. So each case by case scenario. If you had anal glands done and the dog never needed it done and you had them done for many years, does the system stop working for itself? I believe they do. I believe it, the, that muscle back there gets weaker. So I wouldn't go messing with my dog's anal glands. But some of the things to watch for are nipping, is, nipping or chewing the tail regularly, whipping back like, what's back there? And no one's back there, right? It's like something's pinching them. Uh, nipping or chewing the tail regularly, scooting their hiney on the floor, more than once a month in my opinion that's a good sign that they can't express them themselves they're constantly scooting fishy rear end odor usually it's with excitement but it happens often they jump on the couch that means like just moving those muscles they jump on the couch and you're like whoo it's not gas it's very fishy it's very it's a very nasty smell it's very fishy odor regularly excitement jumping up and down like they're so full that if the dog moves you smell it because it squirted some fluid out like that like that so those are some, some signs, four signs that to watch for on your pet. So if you're not trained, again, don't mess with the dog's anal glands, but I hope this video helps you decide about that area and learn a little bit about that area. I know a lot of people have not been briefed, if any, right? Comment below, we'll talk to you later. Hey, what's up? Hey, you guys, check it out. So we're like at 93,000 subscribers and 100,000 subscribers, it really is a mile mark in YouTube world. So we are gonna have three gifts that we're gonna give away. If you watched our demo on the X Power, we're giving away the X Power we did the demo on in that video, okay? Boom, that's over $260 dryer, I think. The, the next item is the Anno Brush. We're just putting that out there right now. So we did the demo on the Anno Brush. That's our next gift. And the last gift, David wants to do a mystery gift, okay? So those are the three gifts we're gonna be giving out when we hit 100,000 subscribers. And we're gonna be watching, David's gonna be watching every day. I'm gonna be grooming, so he's gonna be watching. This is how we're gonna know what y'all did. And it really is, a, you don't have to subscribe for this because we realize, you know, people are, are watching our channel are not all subscribers, but it does help if you are subscribed because then we can really see what's going on out there. But in the videos, whatever videos that you want to go watch, all the videos that you want to watch, each video on the bottom, you have to share it. So you click the share, you send it over to your Facebook or your Twitter or your Instagram or wherever you want to share it to, okay? You have to hit the share button, that, that we can see. At the bottom, and once you shared it, you'd go to the comment section and you write shared, S-H-A-R-E-D. And you can write shared Twitter, shared Facebook, shared Instagram. And you write shared at the end of this, at 100,000, I'm gonna go look at all the words shared. And when I see the words shared and I look at all the people who shared it, the one I can see that did a lot of sharing over and over and over and over, those people, one, two, and three, three winners, they're gonna be the ones that receive the one of these gifts. So make sure you write share it on the comments below and make sure you share because we wanna get you a gift. Whether you're a subscriber or a watcher, we really appreciate you. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, our YouTube subscribers and fans. Whether you're a subscriber or not, we would not be here if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks a lot for watching.